Hi everyone, uh, and a very warm welcome uh, back to the manse for uh, another week's service. It's, it's always a joy to welcome you. Uh, this week, just be aware uh, that there's some building work happening at the manse. So if you hear just strange bangs and things going on, that, that's what it is. It's repairing some guttering, uh, just so you know in advance. This week we start a, uh, a new series of services that will keep popping up in the months before Christmas in between those special services of All Souls and Remembrance uh, and also uh, going onwards into January. So, so watch out for those. It's called Voices to be Heard and aims to inspire us through the voices of those on the edge of our community and through the words of Scripture, helping us to be ever more welcoming as church. This is part of our vision at St Paul's, to be that welcoming church for all, but hopefully it will also inspire folk at South Croydon United Church. This week, the voice we hear is of the homeless as we mark Homelessness Sunday. And the opening music, I think, gave us a clue as to the theme of our service with Ladysmith Black Mambazo singing Homeless. Wherever we are, we meet as one family to worship and to allow God's Spirit to open our eyes to those around us. So let us pause to be aware of God's presence with us as we hear words from Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen. And the God of peace will be with you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice.
let us pray. God, our creator, the glory of this season is a reminder of you. As nature displays a riot of colour, bright berries on the hedgerows, trees aflame with oranges and reds, golden leaves carpeting the rich dark earth. Let all creation sing your praise. God our provider, nature bursts forth with abundance, boughs heavy with ripening fruits, the soil yielding buried treasure of root vegetables, the stubble fields telling of a harvest safely gathered, let all creation sing your praise. God of our living and dying, the turning of the seasons reminds us of our frailty as nature goes through change and decay. The morning mists soften the landscape, the days drawing shorter and the nights colder. Let all creation sing your praise. God of all time and seasons, we come before you now, all too aware of our smallness and our brokenness. All too aware that our insecurities, our hidden thoughts and careless actions are an open book to you. God of mercy, forgive us if our words and actions have injured others. God of mercy, forgive us if our silence and inaction have injured others. God of mercy, forgive us for the harm we have done to the earth. God of mercy, forgive us if we have failed to do justice, love mercy and walk humbly with you. God of mercy, Forgive us and renew us. Help us to live in each moment and in every circumstance lives of generosity and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may remember that the pastoral profile for St Paul's mentioned the desire to become more socially aware. And this is also a major theme in St Paul's vision of being a welcoming church for all. The two go hand in hand. To help us become ever more welcoming, it helps for us to be aware of the breadth of people around us and what they are facing. Who may just be seeking for a place of safety, a place of welcome, a place to experience God's love. So this preaching series, just to remind you again, called Voices to be Heard, will aim to help us to continue in our social awareness, to explore what scripture has to say to us and to hear the call to change and to act. This Sunday, as we know by now, is called Homeless Sunday. And so we are using some fantastic prayers and video resources shared by Housing Justice, who are involved in a number of projects to support and home those who have no place to live. As we hear the voice of those who are homeless and those who support them, we begin with a video message from the Most Reverend John Davies, who is Archbishop of Wales. Hello there. What a privilege and a wonderful opportunity to be able to speak to you about something very important. Sunday the 11th of October has been designated as Homelessness Sunday. I think some call it Homeless Sunday. There's a little bit of doubt. It doesn't matter. Its message is what's important. 
We are currently experiencing what so many people on so many occasions have called unprecedented circumstances because of COVID-19. It's impacted on thousands and thousands of lives. It's brought, very sadly, great suffering to very many of those lives and to very many families. One of the problems, however, is that something like that can sometimes overshadow or help us even to forget that there are ongoing crises, if we can call them that, um, in the lives of many people. And homelessness is such a crisis. People who are homeless are vulnerable. People who are vulnerable are in danger. In danger of suffering, in danger sometimes of sickness, even losing their lives, and in danger of exploitation and abuse by others. So Homelessness Sunday gives us the chance to focus on one particular group of people whose needs will not be gone tomorrow, but will be around for quite some time. Having a home is far more than just having a roof over one's head. Having a home means having a degree of security, having a degree of knowing what life holds for us into the future. And it's so easy to take a home for granted. So on the 11th of October, on Homelessness Sunday, please try to focus your thoughts, please try to focus your prayers, and please try to commit to doing what you can to draw to the attention of others who have the capacity to do something about it. The real plight of those who are homeless, their anxiety, their insecurity, and the dangers which they face day by day. Do what you can, find out a little bit more. Do what you can to help. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, reading from verse 5 to 9. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, you shall cry from help for help, and he will say, Here I am. Amen. The New Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, reading verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it? that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger 
and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Thanks be to God for his word. Homeless Sunday gives us focused time to hear from some of the most vulnerable people in our society and our local community. And it shows us how we can best seek to support them. Now, it's not an easy story to hear because it brings us close to issues of mental illness, of addiction, abuse, disability, violence, exclusion and exploitation. Simply all of those things that can bring people down and leave them on the very edge of society. Hearing the reality of being homeless seems to me to be a profoundly gospel thing. Focusing on Jesus and how he tirelessly talks about how we treat the poor, the way we use money, how we welcome or exclude people into our churches and our communities. In both the Old and New Testament readings from Isaiah and Matthew, we cannot fail to hear God's word breaking into our lives. Isaiah makes it clear that God does not require extravagant fasting or public shows of holiness or grand services. God's light shines on those who share bread with the hungry and bring the homeless and poor into their homes. In Matthew, Jesus tells us that when we see a stranger and welcome them, or clothe the naked, or see the sick or in prison and visit them, when we do so, we do it to God, because all are God's children. Homeless Sunday is one of those Sundays when we can do some soul searching about the way in which we support and welcome those in our society, about the way we use our collective resources to do so. Thanks to J Pitt, which is the Joint Public Issues Team, Churches Working for Justice and Peace, which is clearly an organisation's name that trips off the tongue, uh, we can watch a video of Joe's story. Joe was homeless in Edinburgh, but was ultimately helped by the Bethany Christian Trust. And so we hear his story now. So my name is Joe McCormack. Um, I grew up in a, an area called Dunfermline. Uh, I come from a very dysfunctional background. I witnessed uh, addiction from a very young age. I, I saw violence and I, I was exposed to crime. Uh, I experienced growing up uh, worry, anxiety, fear. Uh, throughout my life of I've been in prison, I've been, I know what it's like to be in hospital, I know what it's like to be homeless, I know what it's like to, to be broken, I know what it's like to be depressed, um, isolated, consumed by addiction, I know what it's like to be obsessed by addiction, um, I know what it's like to be overdosed, I know what it's like to wake up in police cells, I know, I know what it's like to, yeah, just. I know what brokenness is, you know, and I know what it's like to be in pain and, and to suffer. Um, but what I, what I first experienced when I moved into the centre was was something that I never, I'll never ever forget, you know, and it was the way that these Christians treated me. And up to that point, I'd never, I don't think I'd ever met a Christian in my life before. But the time, the fact that they took time and and sat and were genuine with me, listened to me. 
uh, were kind to me, who seemed interested in me, like touched me in such a way that I'd never, I'd never ever forgot about, you know. What I've overcome in my life thanks to Jesus Christ and, you know, I'm now, I've now been employed by Bethany to, to be a recovery and resettlement worker, which I deliver uh, Christian recovery groups uh, entitled Bridge to Freedom. But I get the privilege to, to do pretty much what what the best bits of what I experienced in, in the centre, in the community, I get to do, I get to lead and deliver uh, recovery groups. You know, there's two qualities that I, I aim to develop when I'm doing these groups, and one's trust and the other one's honesty, because I knew how hard it was to get honest, I knew how, how easy it is to say that things are okay, to pretend things are okay, to say things like, keep secrets, keep things bottled up. Um, so the moment I got honest, I was able to move forward in my life. I stopped lying to, to people and got honest myself and was able to take steps forward in, in my recovery. So that's what I'm developing in these groups. And what I see is it's like it's miraculous, it's powerful, and it's beautiful to be a part of what, what, what God's doing, you know. Another one's trust because I know how hard it is to, to trust when I've had my trust annihilated and I've, I've abused other people's trust. So I'm just giving these, these beautiful individuals God's children the opportunity to get honest and to get to build trust and it's beautiful to, to see it's a privilege to be part of what Bethany's doing, what God's doing and to be a recovery and a settlement worker. I think what would benefit um, is to see this, this rise up in the community more and more, like churches getting involved and more programmes like Bridge to Freedom to, to explode in the communities, you know. Because yeah, when I was going through addiction, I never, I never had this. You know? But what I'm finding is people are so hungry um, and in and, and need. So, yeah, in my experience, is Jesus is what they need. What will you do to end suffering for those who are experiencing addiction? What will you do to end homelessness? Joe's bravery in telling his story, a story which shows both the desperation and complexity of issues around homelessness and also the support and welcome he received from Christians at the Bethany Trust, help us to see how churches are responding and the efforts that that can have, effect that that can have in changing seriously damaged lives. Many of you will know that St Paul's is part of Croydon Church's floating shelter, which unfortunately will not be running this year due to Covid restrictions, which will unfortunately leave many hundreds in desperate situations. There is a simple way we can help this year. Nightwatch, uh, who last Sunday at the Harvest Festival we, we collected some goods for and raised money for, uh, they currently run a soup run in the centre of Croydon every night. And they're having to buy in sandwiches to cover the huge increase in demand. And Croydon Church's floating shelter would like to help them by providing eight loaves of sandwiches every night during the shelter season from roughly now until the end of March. The idea is that those churches which would have been hosting guests for four Saturday evenings in January, uh, we would like to provide sandwiches on those nights for Nightwatch to distribute. So Croydon Church's floating shelter would cover the cost of ingredients and the, the bread and whatever else so they just need our time uh, and a little bit of effort to butter some bread. This is a simple way to act and to show our welcome and love for some of the most vulnerable in our communities at, at a really challenging time when, as I say, those shelters won't be able to open. So please contact Pat Granville Overton or Sue Erdley if you can help with those sandwiches. We might well look round at each other, at our community and at our world and ask, where can we find you, Lord Jesus? Alan Dickinson helps us to reflect on an answer to that question in his hymn.
compassionate God, thank you for your love for us and for giving us hope. We thank you for everyone who is marking this homeless Sunday across the country. But help us not to forget that people are homeless every day across our nation. We pray for those sleeping under bridges, on park benches, in doorways or bus stations. For those who can only find shelter for the night but must wander in the daytime for families broken because they could not afford to pay the rent, for those who have no relatives or friends who can take them in, for those who have no place to keep possessions, for those who are afraid and feel hopeless, for night shelters reduced or closed by Covid and the creative schemes that seek to help in their absence. For all people affected by homelessness, we pray that you will help us to provide shelter, security, comfort and hope. Jesus, help us to see your face in the eyes of every homeless person we meet so that we may be empowered through word and deed and through all the means we have to bring justice and peace in their time of need. Stir our hearts to move more deeply in our walk with you so that we can be active to share your love with our neighbours and the community. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, in trust and confidence of God's love, we pray as Jesus prayed. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Yeah.
May God bless us with anger at injustice, so that we may work for freedom and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer, so that we may reach out with hands to comfort them. And may God bless us with enough foolishness and hope to believe that we can make a difference in the world, empowered by the Spirit to do what others claim cannot be done. Having heard with our own ears the reality of homelessness, may our welcome increase. We go from, from this worship, from this time of listening, with the blessing of God, Creator, Son and Spirit. Amen.